Hey everyone, this is Pallabi and I'm back with the fourth game of the book Logical Chess Move by Move by Irving Genev. From this game, we will briefly learn about the opening King's Gambit declined and also few principles of chess. So let's start. So in this game, white was Blackburn and black was Blanchard and it was played in London in 1891. So here white started with e4, then black played e5. Con both are controlling the center. Now white played f4. Now this is called King's Gambit. An offer of a pawn to induce black to surrender his share of the center. So if, if here white uh, black captures the pawn, which will enable white to play knight to f3 and followed by d4 and dominate the center and also make way for this bishop to attack the pawn and also controlling all these four squares. So after f4, black did not capture. Black played bishop to c5. Now with this bishop move, black is controlling this diagonal and also controlling the center square and also stopping white from castling. White cannot castle short. So after bishop c5, now white played knight to c3. Now white is trying to lure black from into playing bishop takes g1 and then rook takes g1 and when queen h4 check it's a double attack attacking the uh, giving check to the king and also attacking the h2 pawn then white would play g3 queen cross h2 and rook g2 attacking the queen and also the e5 pawn which is good for white now after knight to c3 now black played knight to c6 also controlling the center supporting the e5 pawn and uh, controlling the d4 square which will not allow white to play d4 so after knight c6 now white played knight to f3 which is developing towards the center and also attacking the e5 pawn also controlling the h4 square Preventing black from playing queen h4 check. So after knight f3, now black played e cross f4. Now this is a poor move on at least four counts. First of all, in moving a pawn instead of a piece, black loses sight of the chief objective in all opening strategy, which is move the pieces. Get them off the back rank and on the job. Secondly, he surrenders his hold on the center and its privileges and thirdly he wastes time capturing a pawn which he cannot retain also he permits white to seize the center uh, seize the center in the next move by playing d4 so here white immediately played d4 occupying the center also attacking the c5 bishop and controlling all these four squares also this c1 bishop is now free to develop which is also attacking the pawn on f4 now black played bishop to b4 pinning the knight on c3 now white played bishop cross f4 gains tempo with this capture and recovers the lost pawn and also develops a piece at the same time now black played d5 attacking the e4 pawn making way for the c8 bishop to develop now white played e5. All pawn moves have positive and negative aspects. Tarash used to say every pawn move loses the position. One drawback for white in the advance of this e pawn is that the occupation of e5 by a pawn deprives his pieces of a useful square. The knight especially operates to great advantage when posted at e5. So if the knight was posted on e5 instead of the pawn, the knight would have been stronger. So um, in compensation, the pawn makes black's position somewhat cramped and prevents black's g8 knight to develop from f6. So here black cannot develop the knight from f6 as the pawn is controlling this f6 and also this d6 square. So here after e5 now black played bishop cross c3 with a check on the king. Black wants to make doubled pawn in white's position. So black captured the pinned knight which actually released white from the pressure of being pinned. 
also black moved another piece instead of developing other pieces so here white captured b cross c3 now there is a doubled pawn on uh, white's position but white can play c4 later on and exchange the double pawn with black's d pawn uh, this uh, capture of the pawn uh, b takes a3 the b file is now open for the rook to occupy to dominate this file now black played bishop to e6 although bishop f5 was important because to fight uh, for control of the vital squares so this diagonal is also very important so after bishop to e6 the bishop is developed behind a pawn so it's not a good place for a bishop now white played bishop to d3 an excellent development controlling two diagonals now black played h6 apparently to prevent knight to g5 or bishop to g5 but white is only interested in developing his pieces so white castled secures the king bringing the rook on an open file which is this f file uh, which is now cluttered up by a knight and a bishop but can be moved out of the way later now black played knight g e7 there is no better square than this uh, for this knight at this moment now white played rook b1 following another golden rule which is seize any files that are open control them at once with rooks or queens develop pieces where they enjoy maximum mobility play the moves necessary to establish a safe superior position direct your efforts in weakening enemy position cramping the movements of his pieces and reducing the capacity of his pieces resistance before you make the mo first move of a combination when the time is ripe the attack will play itself so with this rook b1 move white is attacking the b7 pawn also dominating this b file now black played b6 protects the pawn but weakens the light squares also there is no support of the pawn for this knight so after b6 now white played queen to d2 develops the queen connects the two rooks here and also there is another major reason for this queen development can you spot it let's see so here black castled short walking right into the trap now white played bishop cross h6 at the price of the bishop white gets two pawns and demolishes the barricade of pawns near the king now black played g cross h6 otherwise black would have lost a pawn now white played queen cross h6 white has got two pawns for a bishop his queen is powerfully placed in enemy territory also threatening to checkmate on queen to h7 in the next turn also ripped away the screen of the pawns in front of the king the knight can jump to g5 and join the attack if more help is needed white can bring his rook to f3 and then to g3 so after this black played knight to g6 to block the checkmate on h6 if black had played knight f5 then bishop takes f5 bishop takes f5 and queen takes c6 if black had played bishop takes f5 then also bishop takes f5 knight takes f5 and queen takes c6 and if black had played f5 then white can simply capture the bishop on e6 so after knight g6 now white played knight g5 again threatening to checkmate on h7 now black played rook to e8 provides black king a flight square now white played a brilliant move rook cross f7 then black played bishop cross f7 after rook cross f7 white is threatening to checkmate on h7 and the rook is controlling the f8 box so black played bishop cross f7 and then white played queen h7 check king f8 and queen cross f7 checkmate 
So from this game, we learned that uh, these five principles. First of all, occupy the center with pawns. Develop your pieces towards the center. Castle as early as possible. Develop bishops on open diagonals. Do not neglect piece development. This is very important that you uh, that you uh, don't neglect piece development. Also, seize any files that are open. Control them at once with rooks or queens. Then develop pieces where they enjoy maximum mobility and direct your efforts in weakening the enemy position and cramping the movements of his pieces. So I hope you learned something from this game as well. Uh, thank you for watching and please like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in, the, in my next video. Thank you and bye bye.